Veni Sanct Spiritus, Apostolic Letter of His Holiness Pope Jacobus Primo, on the subject of sanctity and sanctification of the true Catholic soul, and the present time difficulties regarding the worldwide spread of apostasy, the widespread denial of the true Catholic religion, which is solely Catholic tradition, and on the horrifying acceptance of the heretical poisonous novelties of the atheistic communist diabolical origin. Come Holy Ghost and enrich with thine heavenly gifts those who belong to thee, God and divine protector of your church, the genuine and only church, the true Roman Catholic Church, founded by our Lord Jesus Christ and established by the blood of martyrs and saints, to perfection, unto obedience and service to our Lord, by the grace of God, given to all who are truly Catholic, peace and benediction from this genuine Holy See, from this true Supreme Pastor, the unworthy witness of all that is written, and will be written, and it is in the history as being written. Taking all care in disposing this apostolic letter for the edification of all those who truly sincerely desire to save their immortal souls for God and all eternity, we have decided to make certain, with the use of our supreme apostolic office, as the chief pastor of the flock of Christ our Lord, that those who may be directed by the same our letter to their sanctification and perfection in the Catholic religion, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, we do desire that those who learn from these admonitions and guidance may order their lives to the same purpose of sanctification of their soul, and thus learn in obedience to the Church to be truly Christian, which means only and solely truly Catholic and nothing besides or otherwise, so we will in this present letter set forth some of our thoughts on this important subject as it is pertinent to the purpose before us and necessary for those who may hear its truth. That the Holy Ghost by His presence in the human soul is the guarantor of sanctity is not a fact unknown, but the proof of this truth is manifested in the true virtues and divine guidance to charity, professed and practiced, the good fruits produced are giving witness to the fact, that the supernatural love of God is with and inside the same soul, being inflamed by its burning and direct power to do as God wills to be done, to accomplish His will and nothing else, to make the works of such sanctified souls truly divine in essence of their accomplishments, which breathe the sweet savor of love to God, which they all show him in their will and good fruits that such good trees bear to God. And thus these true Christians, which mean solely and only true Catholics, in their love for our Lord, are repaid by this divine and therefore supernatural gift of guidance of their will and intellect, to the perfection of the results produced by such favored souls, and they wonder at this immense gift themselves, because it reveals to them how incapable they were before, to do such things as they are able to do now and onward, and with the sure easiness, because the time of their separation from the vileness and deformation of their soul is now past and they learn in their senses and spiritual understanding that it is truly none other but God himself, leading them to their such remarkable advancement, and so they, if they are truly grounded in virtues and being grateful to our Lord for such miraculous gifts, will give him the due glory and honor, and will be the more happy they get to serve him in all humility, in his church. Granted therefore, as they have obtained it, they are in the state of exalted happiness, being inflamed by such gifts of the divine love in themselves, and not knowing fully how this is even possible, they wonder the more that God has chosen them for such objects of his love and favor, and so such divinely favored souls, striving to preserve humility, will not fail to recognize the fact that what God has granted, and this of his own bounty and not because of any of their doings, he can again take away, but they hope that will not happen and that he will favor them even more and help them against their enemies, of which the most evil one is the devil himself, and so such happy and truly Catholic souls do acknowledge that they are not worthy at all of any such divine gifts, yet they know that what God wishes to give he will make certain that it is worthily received, so that the good fruits resulting from cooperation with such graces are not squandered but produce even more and abundance of virtues, resulting in sanctity of the soul. In this sense, of what we have just explained, the examination of what is taking place in such souls need not follow, because this transformation of such a divinely favored soul is what the description done by human intellect, be it never so able, cannot be fully achieved, because there are simply no human terms to describe this supernatural phenomena, because, and precisely so, 
it is divine and in its essence and foundation not human at all. Our answers to potential questions. When we have thus set forth the subject of our present letter and the questions so far answered need no further examination, our conquest of the proposed subject may be hampered by certain theological inquiries and questions, which may arise from the minds who are not at all accustomed to such supernatural divine occurrences and have therefore no expertise nor experience in recognizing them, nor ability of analysis and of true description at their disposal. Why is it so, one might ask? But there is a very simple answer to this, they are not truly Catholic, and even if these were the few truly Catholic souls whom God has taken to himself and allows them to see and hear the truth, God is not revealing to them in their understanding what is taking place inside such favored souls and much less what the theological mystical background of the whole phenomena is, and or will be, so that such philosophically and spiritually foreign language seems to them but as a fairy tale and nothing less. In another terms, what the supernatural experience does not yield and memory and intellect cannot absorb and contain, because it is a divine gift and nothing less, then what God himself does not give, how can it be received and understood by the potential recipient or witness of it? This is clearly impossible, and cannot be merited by such souls who are severed from God by any of their grave defects, meaning by mortal sins of any kind, including that of heresy and or apostasy and unbelief, so such people are convinced that all such things are nothing at all, made up, distorted or perverted, imagined by the true recipients and disseminated solely for the selfish reason of becoming important in the eyes and ears of men, and yet, we do testify to this fact, this outright fallacy and idiotic anti-Catholic approach, which in fact borders on heretical and sacrilegious denial of the infinite powers of God, who is truly almighty and can do all things whatsoever, that these poor obstinate objectors to the supernatural powers of God and what he does and wills, they will not be able to grasp the magnitude of their error as such, because blind and deaf as they are, severed from God and his true church, the true Roman Catholic Church, they do not obtain the light of this truth from our Lord, and neither can they gain it in any way by their own endeavor and energy, even if they had the knowledge and understanding that such supernatural divine miraculous phenomena exists. What can be more deplorable than to see such obvious blindness to this exalted truth, and where does this blindness end, we sincerely ask. No, the answer is in their unbelief, in the denial and or outright rejection of the true religion, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, and so when these poor perverted souls hear and learn about such, church-approved, miraculous occurrences from the times past, or some potential new ones, they scoff the facts and proofs as if they had the authority to decide, which they lack thoroughly, nay more, their claim to their fallacy of denial is not at all shaken but the more strengthened by such false conclusions, as the devil, who wishes nothing of this kind to be present in front of the unbelievers, heretics, apostates, infidels etc. whom all he holds hostage in his diabolical tyrannical stranglehold, the devil is not allowing them to see the truth because otherwise they would be willing to convert, repent, and become truly Catholic, and so his diabolical grip on their souls would cease and would be terminated by God, who, rich in mercy, would allow them to his mercy and sincere recovery, and upon their true abjuration of their false heretical beliefs, his true Catholic Church would welcome such recovered souls to her protecting bosom of the true and valid sacraments, by the grace of God. So therefore, as we have said many times before, when this blindness stands against them, and they are not willing in humility and obedience to learn and fully profess the true divinely revealed faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, then their conversion is utterly impossible and God will leave them to their own self-will and thus to their own misery. And those who have one time or another belonged to this horrible diabolically driven novice ordo anti-Catholic sect, and they still fallaciously think that they are, or were, Catholic, and that they, thinking that they are right in their claims, have the audacity to call themselves Catholics, and they are absolutely none of such favored souls nor Catholic faithful at all, as they profess non-Catholic semi-Protestant heretical beliefs, which were invented by the devil through his trusted collaborators, the enemies of the Catholic Church, and then, 
when they are made aware of this fact by the true authority of the Catholic Church, by the divine guidance of the Holy Ghost, they get offended and scoff this true guidance and or direct magisterial pastoral judgment on the true doctrinal and canonical standing of their soul, whether they are heretics and apostates and therefore outside the bosom of the Holy Mother Church, without any chance of salvation, and so this they're proud. Rejection of the truth of the genuine Catholic faith leads them even more away from God, as if they themselves, in their audacious pride, were self-made arbiters of this matter and none others, much less the true authority of the Catholic Church, vested by God in our person, whom these self-willed sectarian non-Catholics, possessed by their diabolical hatred of the truth, reject, instead them grasping and using true humility, so that our Lord may lead them to acknowledge the truth that they are not, and never were, Catholic in the first place, which is the only way to become Catholic, in their case for the first time in their lives. Being thus disposed to deny this fact these perverted souls are seeking the knowledge and, because of their unwillingness to accept the truth about their real standing of their soul, God is not helping them to become humble and to sincerely seek to fully convert and be truly Catholic, and so the Church, following her fully binding canonical and dogmatic laws and theological doctrine of salvation, cannot possibly make any deviances and concessions about it, so that the compromises such souls would dare to ask the Catholic Church to make in their cases and permit them to have their say in what the Catholic faith is and is not, or at least to grant them some kind of influence on the subject of their salvation, these poor souls do not in the least realize that by attempting such a sacrilegious compromises from the divine institution Roman Catholic Church, they are sentencing themselves to more deeper mire of heresy and cannot be therefore admitted into the bosom of the Church until they are fully and completely obedient to her, which they are not willing to do, nor acknowledge as essential to their conversion. What a horrifying audacious perversity this is, many of them realize too late and, as our Lord sees all such their misery and blindness, and their pride oriented against his true Catholic Church and his true vicar, our Lord remains silent towards them as these blind perverted souls want to dictate, contrary to the divine ordinance and dogmas of the Catholic faith, whatsoever is not according to their taste, opinion, and liking, and whatsoever other dislikes and oppositions against the revealed truth such souls may entertain and, God forbid, profess. These circumstances, which we are in deep sorrow describing here, are not some rare isolated occurrences, but the widespread common consequence in which this world of sin finds itself, to its own loss and destructive heretical standing in front of God, which, as we have already explained above, leads solely and only to hell and nowhere else. Attempting to fabricate their own quote heaven on earth unquote, is a heresy. Firstly we have to conclude, based on the historically certain knowledge and factual evidence, that false religions and fabricated diabolically invented ideologies, namely those based on the most pernicious heresy of atheism, communist tyranny, these false and thus very evil systems will never work, as God has never been their author, as on the contrary their sole author is the father of all lies the devil himself. So likewise, those adhering to these communist atheistic nihilistic perversions, which result in the ideological state-run tyranny and oppression, and the direct denial and tyrannical suppression of the Catholic religion as such, by the ruling class, staffed fully by such perverted atheistic communist elements, so that the genuine Catholic Church is not permitted by the communist state to possess her God-given liberty and fulfill her divinely given mission of salvation of souls, which mission? These atheistic communist enemies of the Church sabotage and subsequently prevent from being accomplished, by their tyrannical, in most cases usurped, exercise of power of the police state, where truth and justice are both inherently replaced by brute force of the communist atheistic lie and direct injustice, where the authority of the Church is denied and proponents of freedom of conscience silenced and persecuted by the state to the fullest extent of their tyrannical abilities and perverted anti-Catholic forcefully implemented, diabolically fabricated, and thus false, standards of life. Blood is spilled, the opponents of communism arrested and subjected to political mock trials, where the atheistic communist state becomes the sole arbiter of its own injustice, 
and where the true Catholic Church is not permitted by such tyrannical abuse of authority by the communist state to have any say whatsoever, in anything, including the Catholic religion, as all of it is outlawed by the communists to the fullest extent possible, meaning, the so-called quote re-education camps unquote are promptly enacted for the purpose to enable the communist state-run mafia to attempt to destroy all free will and all liberty of conscience, including liberty to practice and profess the genuine Catholic religion, which such diabolically driven atheistic communist monsters, by their evil anti-Catholic tyranny prevent from being freely practiced and professed. This is the sad and most tragic outcome and result of permissiveness of what religion and philosophy of life is permitted and established in the state, as firstly and foremost, the necessary brainwashing preparations to sever the populace of the target countries from the truth, which means from the genuine Catholic religion, is the communist priority, and is manifestly visible in their decades-long achievement in this strategy, for their goal of establishing their heresy of atheism everywhere in the world is today almost completely realized, worldwide. But that this point is clearly understood, the history of communism, its own fabricated deception of collapse and demise in the quote former unquote Soviet bloc, this fact alone is apparent just by considering the prevention of genuine justice from being administered upon the quote defeated unquote communist hierarchy of these Soviet bloc countries, as none of such communist officials, all of them criminals of the most evil order, have been punished, as these quote formerly unquote communist countries, including Russia, have successfully protected them from any genuine prosecution whatsoever, and were in fact fully protected by the secular arm of the state, and this for their crimes of murder and communist tyranny, as that is the most hideous kind ever seen in the history of the mankind. But what does this enumeration of the communist guilt show today? The Holy Scripture and countless teachings of the Fathers of the Church both inform us of the upcoming time of the Antichrist, and by this term is meant a person and his criminal associates worldwide, that will oppose Christ our Lord and this so vigorously and tyrannically in its outcome, that those standing in the way will not be tolerated and permitted to coexist alongside the Antichrist himself, as the devil is his master, as it is also written in the book of the Apocalypse and by Saint Paul. The Apostle, that Satan, and his works will see the light of the day at those dangerous times, before the end of the world comes, and that such tribulation will afflict those, as it is evident, who will remain outside the protective bosom of the Christian Church, which is solely and only the genuine divine institution Roman Catholic Church and none other. That these evil times are approaching only a blind and deaf person would attempt to contradict, as what we do see among the nations of this world, is the worldwide rampant apostasy and outright denial of the Catholic religion as such, the novice ordo apostate sect is being recognized by the majority of the world's populace and accepted, in heresy, contrary to the canonically established truth, that no heretic, apostate and schismatic have access in any way whatsoever to the genuine membership in the Catholic Church, as the mortal sin of heresy and schism are preventing such proud and disobedient souls from this divinely given protection of the Church, of which, after such horrendous sin of heresy these perverted souls are guilty of, they are not worthy and God will not help them on that account to recover and become truly Catholic. The devil is then permitted by God to take over such proud, disobedient perverted souls and control them in punishment in his tyrannical stranglehold indefinitely. Then those who have still somewhat possession of their poor conscience, insufficient as it is in its defective stand in front of God, they attempt to lament how truly evil the times are, in particular those of substantial age who do remember that 30 to 40 years ago the situation in the world was not as much evil as it is now, and so their nostalgia somewhat brings them to this, again, insufficient, recognition of the causes of such a worldwide deplorable development, yet they are incapable to overcome it and be restored, if this has ever been the case, to the state of charity towards God, which means to be truly Catholic. Sadly so, just to be able to realize the extent of these evil causes as such, partially and not in full, as their blindness of heretics does not help one to see the truth in full, yet their will and intellect are both crippled and their recovery from the yoke of Satan is absolutely impossible to come about. 
this necessary incentive or rather prerogative to becoming truly Catholic, is set aside by such souls, the light of the truth does not shine into their souls, the truth that they are not Catholic is not heard by them, and so they remain blind and deaf to all admonitions without any exception, even if they were served with the truth directly in front of their nose, as the diabolically forced blindness halts their senses and does not permit them to obtain their recovery and genuine conversion. The devil remains their master, he keeps them blind, and without the most necessary supernatural divine help of our Lord, their awaiting sentence of hell at the end of their lives is the sole and only conclusion of the aftermath of their denial of the divinely revealed truth, of the Catholic religion, which all are bound by divine ordinance to learn and practice in full. Remarks on the subject of the apostate novice ordo sect. Whenever we have encountered the unavoidable company of the members of this horrifying non-Catholic sect, their response has mostly been that of the lost souls who, claiming to possess, in name only, the prefix Catholic, their heretical convictions and false fabricated beliefs have nothing to do with the Catholic religion, and upon being informed about this so essential defect which will never be anything but the cause of their eternal perdition in hell, these poor perverted souls have not been able to respond in any humility, but in audacious arrogance and pride they continued, in heresy, claiming to be Catholic, and some of them outright scoff at the revealed truth, Ephesians 4, 4-5 etc., that there is only one Catholic faith as there is only one Catholic apostolic church teaching it, in our person, the genuine sovereign pontiff. And being thus blind and not able to hear and comprehend the truth, they have proven the essential point which is reflected in this present apostolic letter, that no matter how much any particular soul attempts to understand and believe the truth, unless God himself helps that soul to it, the door remains shut and cannot be opened without the most necessary aid from God, by his divine grace. Because these perverted apostate sectarian souls neglect to learn and believe the truth of the divinely revealed doctrine of the Catholic faith and the dogmas of salvation always taught by the Catholic Church in the times past, these unfortunate souls are firmly severed from any chance of salvation, by their own fault, by their own rejection of the truth, they listen willfully to their soothsaying false teachers, they tolerate this novice ordo scandals and public heretical fabrications including the absolutely null and invalid false heretical and neo-protestant worship, which has never been valid and true holy sacrifice of the mass but nothing short of diabolical sacrilegious mockery of God by the devil through his collaborators, so likewise and considering the aftermath, these fraudulent believers and non-Catholics do not possess from our Lord any help in recognizing the truth nor ability, by the lack of the divine grace, which is not supplied to them by God, to be able to do anything about it. And the more they hold on to their false sectarian convictions and heretical, apostate, beliefs, the more harder it will be for them to recover, if they ever receive any such help from God to be able to obtain it. And that this our conclusion stands in their mind as one of the last warnings to them that they are deceiving themselves and have not the Catholic faith as apostate sectarians, these poor souls become offended, disregard the truth and are able to persecute those who honestly serve our Lord, the truth himself, in his true Catholic Church. And because of such of their fallacious audacity and apostasy professed and practiced, their recovery, which would be a true miracle of God and nothing less and as they are not converting and cannot be absolved of their heretical beliefs as such and recover from the slavery of Satan, as it is truly impossible, these poor sectarians can only be admitted into the bosom of the true Catholic Church by our pontifical authority and our judgment as the sovereign legislator and magisterial authority of the genuine Roman Catholic Church. But because they, in their pride and denial of the infinite power of God do not recognize this truth and our papal dignity nor office, what remains is only their heretical sacrilegious recognition and adherence to the false leadership of this novice ordo apostate sect, which is holding in sacrilege the Catholic Church's worldwide property, including the Vatican, which this apostate sect has stolen from the Catholic Church, by truly diabolical design and nothing less. And those heretics, as the SSPX, SSPXMC, SSPV etc., who do recognize this novice ordo sect and give it the, null and invalid, allegiance and name of Catholic, 
they being ipso facto excommunicated from the unity of the universal church, this true Roman Catholic Church, such heretics are held captive by Satan at his will and without their genuine conversion, valid absolution from their sin of heresy and apostasy, which belongs by divine and canon law, canon 2314 etc., to us, the genuine vicar of Christ on earth, to judge, and because they do not recognize nor honor this truth, they remain where they are, which means in the tyrannical yoke and stranglehold of Satan himself, being dragged into the infernal ropes of hell down below by him, without the slightest possibility of recovery and freedom from him. The term sect does not mean church, but solely and simply an apostate non-Catholic sect, and that is all these degraded perverted souls have, and the devil is firmly holding them in his tyrannical hands, poor lost souls. Conclusion we have thus explained two classes of human souls present today in this world, one in holy obedience subject to God in his true Catholic Church, in all humility and charity unfeigned and unshaken, and the other class the ungrateful, disobedient and perverted slaves of the devil, opposing the Catholic faith, and the Catholic Church in her true supreme pastor, alongside all the infallible doctrine and dogmas the Church has ever taught on the subject of faith and morals, meaning on the subject of the eternal salvation. Therefore those who remain outside this genuine Catholic Church, God will leave them solely and only to their own misery and at the end, if they die in such a deplorable state of their soul, they will without any exception as heretics and apostates burn in hell forever. No recovery and genuine conversion is possible to such who neglect or deny to learn and obey the truth of the Catholic faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, and who are disobedient to the divine institution Roman Catholic Church and her genuine sovereign pontiff, as such sins are in direct variance with the divine ordinance and command of our Lord, which are all established in the Holy Scripture and were always taught by the Catholic Church for the safety and salvation of souls. And because the worldwide apostasy is so rampant and widespread, the genuine recovery and conversion of such souls is nothing short of the miracle of God, if that would happen, but the possibility of it at this point, observing the unfavorable circumstances, which are painfully visible, there is no doubt that any major conversions will be extremely low in numbers, and that the genuine Catholic Church must remain in her forced catacombs, as this world is in denial of the truth and in denial of giving any aid to the Church and her sovereign pastor, to continue the divinely given mission of salvation of souls substantially and thus successfully. And because the sin of heresy and apostasy remains so predominantly widespread, the chance of more souls coming and converting inside the bosom of the Church, as outside of this Bride of Christ no genuine conversion is possible, such outcome is today only matter of ardent hope, but unsupported by any factual conclusive evidence to the effect explained and stated. Therefore, we, by our supreme apostolic authority do reprobate and proscribe all contrary and therefore fully heretical opinions which may occur and come against this our apostolic letter, as any such audacious fallacy and denial of the magisterial and teaching authority of the church constitutes mortal sin of heresy and automatic excommunication, specially reserved to the judgment of this genuine holy apostolic see. And that none may doubt these are declared infallible words, let them, who may be such and oppose this our present doctrine, they must reflect that by doing so, they will incur, alongside our displeasure and our declared judgment upon them as being apostates and heretical reprobates and thus outside the Catholic Church and without any chance of salvation, they will incur the wrath of God Almighty and of the Apostles St. Peter and St. Paul. Given in our present exile, the catacombs, on the feast of St. Abdon and St. Senon, martyrs, on the 30th day of the month of July, in the year of our Lord 2021, the first, visible, of our pontificate. Jacobus Primo, Papa et Pontifex. The end, the divine gift of salvation, which means the priceless gift of Catholic faith, is not given by our Lord to those who neglect, or will neglect, to be grateful to Him for it, and who will not take this gift and bring forth true and only good fruits by professing it and practicing it in full, as anything else they attempt to do to the contrary is insufficient and thus can never please God, and will not lead them to their eternal salvation at the end, 
for all that is opposed to the Catholic faith is heresy and leads only to hell at the end, no exceptions.